All right, so uh, in the method section, you can see that this is a 12-minute protocol, um, but you know the test is only 30 seconds. So uh, make sure you know what you're doing. Look over the methods here and look over the methods in the handout uh, to make sure you know what you're doing because you don't want to repeat this 12-minute protocol if you mess something up. So uh, make sure you know what you're doing. And we'll go through some of it right here. So uh, one of the first few things we need to do is measure the heart rate, right, to look at the anticipatory response. So at time equals zero is when the person gets on the bike and they get comfortable and they just sit there and you measure their heart rate. Okay. And so they're going to sit on the bike for two minutes and not do anything. And at time equals zero, you take a heart rate, and then you take another heart rate at one minute and 50 seconds. And in those about uh, one minute and 50 seconds, you'll see that the heart rate might go up. And that's just them knowing that they're about to do an intense bout of exercise, and that's just uh, the anticipatory response. Um, and the subject will start pedaling at time equals two minutes. Uh, and make sure you give a countdown with 30 seconds left before they start pedaling. So uh, in this protocol, when time equals one minute, 30 seconds, you'll start a countdown, 30, 29, 28. Uh, and they'll definitely kind of get the person on the bike a little bit jacked up. And you can see them uh, get this fight or flight response. All right. And then uh, at time equals two minutes, that's when the warm up process starts. So they just start pedaling. There's a five minute warm up uh, at 50 to 60 RPMs at low resistance. Uh, but you have to mix in a few sprints, okay, especially at time equals uh, two, three, and four. So the second minute, the third minute, and the fourth minute of the warm up process, uh, you're going to want to do a five second uh, sprint at the calculated resistance. Okay. Uh, so another thing uh, is the sprint and make sure that you know what you're doing there. Uh, and then after that, there's a recovery period. So they just did sprints, and now they need to make sure that they're not fatigued at all okay, before they actually do the Wingate test. So there's a two-minute recovery period, low resistance, very slow cycling at 20 RPMs. All right, and finally we get towards uh, the fun stuff. So we have the acceleration period. Um, so they're going to start to get ready for the actual test. We're going to slowly increase the resistance and get it up there in 15 seconds. And so finally, at 9 minutes and 15 seconds, that's when the Wingate test happens. This is the most important 30 seconds of the test. Uh, this is where actually we get our data from. So it's 30 seconds, all out cycling at the right resistance. And then uh, everyone that's in the group needs to have a job. Okay, So there's a timer who has a stopwatch, and they're counting out every 5 seconds. And then there's someone counting the revolutions per minute, so they just need to have a have a quick eye uh, and see how many people or how many uh, rotations our, our subject uh, does in 30 seconds. And we'll go over the tasks in a minute, but uh, you need to be on top of your game during the Wingate test for the 30 seconds. It's the most important part. And then uh, finally, at the end of the test, you want to get a heart rate measurement uh, right as soon as they're done with the 30 second cycling. And you'll see it's pretty close to their peak. Uh, so the peak heart rate for somebody is 220 minus their age. So for me, I'm 25 years old, 220 minus 25 is 195. So my peak heart rate is 195. And you can see at the end of a test, you know, my heart rate might be around you know, 170, 180. So uh, it's kind of cool. So make sure you get that heart rate right after they're done cycling. And then there's just a two minute cool down process. Um, so very low resistance and low speed cycling.
So that's a typical sprint that you would do during a warm process. So we're right at the recovery phase, uh, which I'm kind of doing a, an abbreviated version of right now. You have your acceleration period, and then it's actually a 30 second period. Right now, acceleration? <laughs> oh, I'll give you a minute. <laughs> So these are the tasks that I mentioned before. So we're going to have our subject who is on the bike. And then there's the timekeeper whose main job is just to keep time for the whole 12 minutes. Uh, but they got to be kind of loud because during the actual Wingate test, they need to call out every five second interval, right? You know, five, 10, 15, as the process goes on for the 30 second test. All right. Uh, and that's important for the other people who are doing the RPM counting and the RPM recording. Uh, for the bike resistance setter, all you have to do is turn a knob on the bike to get the resistance up to the right uh, resistance. For me, it would be 6 kilograms. So the subject um, will go against, or I would go against 6 kilograms. And the bike resistance setter, just turn the knob to get up to 6 kilograms uh, as I get ready for my wind gate test. Uh, then there's the heart rate recorder. So they just record the three heart rate measurements that we mentioned in the methods before. Uh, and then there's the RPM counter and the RPM recorder. These two people are very important. Again, like I said, the RPM counter has to be kind of quick. The 30 second test is going to happen very quickly and you'll see that the person who is on the bike, they can, they can cycle pretty quickly. So you have to have a quick eye. You got to be able to count how many revolutions they're doing uh, every five seconds. So the timekeeper will call out time. So maybe the timekeeper will call out, you know, five seconds and the RPM counter has to yell out or, or tell the recorder how many revolutions have occurred in those five seconds. So the timekeeper might yell out five seconds. And if the counter is called, you know, counted nine revolutions, then they tell the recorder that was nine. And then the recorder just writes it down. But it's going to be, it's going to happen pretty quick. So you have to be ready for it. Uh, and then uh, proceed for the, for the next 30 seconds. Uh, so again, the RPM counter and the RPM recorder must work together and they must be on the same page. But those are the main tasks that you have to do. Uh, and then after you collect your data, so do that for two subjects, uh, and then you'll be ready for your lab report. So you'll have a results and a discussion section in this lab report. It's a short form lab report. So uh, do the tables that are on the handout. And then, so that's looking at the, the gender, the age, the training status of your subjects. And then you also want to fill in a table that has the numbers that you calculated. You know, the peak anaerobic power, mean anaerobic power, and then there's a few other calculations that you have to do. So make sure those two tables are filled out. Uh, and then in your lab report, show me the math that you did for your sample calculations. And when I say uh, one per major calculation, I mean, well, you're going to have two subjects. 
but in the handout, you'll see that they just do one calculation for each of the numbers that I'm looking for, right? So you only have to do, only have to show me the sample calculations for maybe subject one or subject two, uh, or you can use, you know, the mean anaerobic power for subject one and do the peak anaerobic power for subject two, but just show me the math for all all six calculations, uh, you know. So just do six of those calculations and put them on the on the handout or put them on the lab report, uh, and then in the discussion section. Just answer the questions that I have at the end of the handout. Uh, try to put that in coherent paragraphs. Don't number them, you know, one, two, three, four, based on the question. Answer and address all the questions and put it together uh, in a nice form in a few paragraphs. Uh, and then you can submit this online under lab number one uh, on Spark.